we can see from uh, different diagnostic that sometimes th some spirit they are not working very well. So we can use for uh, special drinks of the week. So okay. we try to to push and make the people like try new things. Hi guys, this is your host Sid Patel. I'm the CEO of Beverage Trade Network and London Spirits Competition. I'm here with Christina. Hi. Hi, hello nice Christina. Thanks Thank for having me here. Thank you. She's the bar supervisor of the Donovan Bar at Brown's Hotel, which is one of the prestigious bars in London. Today we're going to talk about, you know, uh, the role of a bar supervisor slash bar manager and what are the challenges you do come across on running a successful bar and how you can grow the bar. Thanks for having me again, Christina. Thank you. Why don't you give a little uh, brief and a rundown about your journey and how you ended up here and what do you do here, please? So I moved to London almost seven years ago. So uh, I previously worked in Sardinia and I studied in hospitality school. So let's say I grew up in this kind of hospitality world from when I was a kid. And uh, after like uh, the diploma, after the school, mm -hmm. I decided to move to London to to learn and uh, grow up in terms of uh, professional. Mm -hmm. And um, I finally get in this huge city, beautiful, that I think was the best one for my profession. Plus to learn a new language was uh, great. I started slowly, slowly moving between like a uh, Italian restaurant just to start. So you did a sommelier role as well? Uh, no, not really. I started a long time ago in the floor as okay. a waitress and a commie waitress and after when I was uh, still in Sardinia, uh, I discovered how beautiful was the bar. Got it. So I quite fell in love with the bartender, the bartender. life. Yeah, so yeah. how to create the cocktail. Even I started with just a kind of spritz. So I was like very emotional, <laughs> very excited making these uh, easy drinks. Nice. But they were very particular and the people that were very happy drinking something great for myself. Yep. So I was like, yeah, I can learn more and be good making something much more like creative mm -hmm. and uh, specific. So when I move in London, yeah, I start slowly, slowly moving between uh, like Italian places just to set up and learn a little bit the, the habit of this new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And after between nice bars, I would say street bars. Mm -hmm. And after finally I'm back to the hotel, okay. which was my main goals to come back in this kind of hotels environment and uh, hotel life. Uh, let's go on the role of the bar supervisor, right? You know, yeah. what are the metrics? What are the KPIs, which, you know, let's say you have to do as your job, like the tick points every day, every week. And then uh, what kind of uh, metrics are you being measured on? So before to get this position <clears throat> or like, to be ready on that, of course, you need to have a good knowledge in terms of but back bar, bar and also the floor mm -hmm. because sometimes if we think about bartender we don't see what there is after like the, the front bar. Mm -hmm. I mean it's very difficult. You need to be ready to move everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's what I like of my background of bartender. And uh, of course I start with the preps, mm -hmm. cutting guys and after I move in the front bar. So making like uh, drinks, mm -hmm. mixing spirits and after of course the serving to the table. So. Everything starts from the back bar Got when it. you create the preps, they count in the front and after till the table where you finally offer the, the drinks. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have these three points like uh, you need to, to know where you are moving, mm -hmm. where, where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you need to be a good team leader mm -hmm. because uh, especially when it's busy, you need to know how to approach. The, the other guys of the team, mm -hmm. how to help and support them. So Understood. It's, it's quite difficult when you jump from like a classic position of bartender or waiter or waitress because you have some uh, some job to do, like yep. some uh, uh, daily, uh, uh, I would say, duty mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you are a, like a junior manager, you have your duties, but you need to think also about the 
the work of all the teams. The business so, side and the people side of yes, things, right? Like you that. need to be ready to help if they need help. Yeah. So you need to find the time to do your your job and your duties mm -hmm. and help the others to, to finish their duties if they need help, of course. And uh, it gets time, of course, to yeah. to arrive at this position. And I'm very glad that yeah. this bar, this hotel, they gave me the chance to, to grow up in these four years. So I cannot more happy than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. that. Uh, what is the difference between a normal chain type bar, let's say, or, or and you know more of a bars like the Savoy, the Ritz, uh, you know the, this one. You know what what kind of elements and uh, the type of the bartending skills you require are different. I believe uh, if we start making a difference between a street bar and hotel bars, mm -hmm. of course there is a different like uh, approach. Okay. Like uh, maybe in a street bar you have. Uh, something that uh, you you create a connection with the guests that sometimes it's just someone that lives close to the building so people that maybe are local mm -hmm. in london or in the hotel you i mean for me the hotel is magic yeah. like uh, you you have different guests that probably they come back in this place just because they feel it's home so one point is to have a guest that is already at home another one is to, to create this kind of connection this friendship with guests that they travel from all around the world and maybe you see just once are here, but mm -hmm. you 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 wait the moment till uh, you connect and you approach again this guest. So it. it's already for me one one big difference. Right. But of course, I really love street bars. It's just that I feel much more like uh, in love with this environment of the hotels. Super. And uh, the difference between like uh, others hotel bars and this one is of course the people that there was again the bar and the front bars like uh, our mentor mm -hmm. Salvatore Calabrese mm -hmm. which is his own style like uh, his classic and old school style of course as have a different approach of mm -hmm. the other mentor of bar manager of the mm -hmm. the rest of the hotels it's beautiful because each hotel <coughs> have a different style mm -hmm. and different like uh, approach to the guests mm -hmm. maybe they are elegant we all follow the uh, high standard but in a different way Got first it. personally and second like professionally like oh. uh, it's quite difficult to explain because it's something that uh, it comes naturally yep. from uh, the people that we serve yep. or even the bar team connection like uh, it's it's quite difficult to say one is better than another one Got even it. the drinks list sometimes are based on uh, very simple drinks mm -hmm. but even if we do like uh, a twist on a Negroni maybe our is different from other scars. Yeah. I mean, there is something always special in a different place where you go. So that's why London is beautiful. It's yeah. too, it's too various. It's like you can choose where you can go, where True. you prefer to, to spend your your afternoon or your evening. So True. Uh, define a good bartender. Who is a good bartender to you? Thinking about uh, good bartenders, I will say me personally that I'm going to a bar and I sit, for example, alone on the bar counter. Is the person that. Uh, makes your day like uh, happy or doesn't mm -hmm. m doesn't feel you like uh, that you are alone at the bar like uh, nice. that you are in a good company and the bartender of course is still working but in the same times a good bartender knows how to split his time with the drinks so his job and how to talk with the guests at the bar or how to prepare a special drinks for you so it's nothing like a uh, impossible to understand just when you are sitting at the bar you understand that in front of you you have a great person yeah and uh, maybe the drinks is good the atmosphere around is beautiful so that person behind the bar looks just like a, a person just yeah. a bartender bar is actually making your uh, experience very unique at that bar at that place and what makes maybe in this case the donovan bar special and what do you look for you know when you're hiring a bartender for your uh, bar what kind of questions do you ask in an interview? Let's say, you know, how do you define, how do you go about the interview process when you're recruiting someone? Uh, for sure, we, the first things that we do, we, we have a look on the CV. Mm -hmm. That is the first things that we probably uh, have from that person. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we start the chat is everything about personality as well. Okay. It's something that is like 50 and 50 between the knowledge and the personality. Got it. it we we want people that are naturally in love with this job okay. or anyway they really 
have passion in what they do. Yep. So even if you have sometimes a very good knowledge, but you are not happy to be in a place or to be involved in this job, it's like you can see maybe how enthusiastic is it mm. when they talk or not. Talk to the customers yeah. mainly, yeah. It's something that of course is more, uh, it's like the duty of our bar manager, but I can see when they talk, my bar manager is very like uh, focused on the personality, on the approach, the mm -hmm. first approach. Mm -hmm. So it's very important how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. like, what about the, the experience? Do you, do you normally look for experience or it's okay? Uh, you hire some people, you know, if, without an experience as well? It depends on the position, of course. Okay. Like uh, if you need to start from the barback position, is different than someone comes for, for the bartender position. The experience is very important <clears throat> because anyway, it's a high level place. So yep. we cannot hire like everyone like from one day to another. Yep. So that's why I need the training and maybe someone wants to apply as a bartender, but it works in a different place or maybe he wasn't confident with LQA or this high standard that we need to follow. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's better to start with a position that is like less, Got let's it. say, yeah. and after grow up in this place with our like rules, with our lives, like yeah. uh, with our style. Got it. Is it, it really depends on the occasion and on the person because everyone is different. Everyone has an, a different knowledge. Yeah. So even how you connect with the bar straight away on your trial sheet, for example, maybe you can be scared sometimes say you are not very fluid on yeah. talking and uh, moving behind the bar back, so yeah it's also when you get in love straight away with uh, people with someone and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it so on on the uh, team meeting right like let's say you do a little briefing with your team uh, is that every day or a little bit of just pep talk you know mm -hmm. or make, lighten their mood you know uh, give them a little positivity it depends like uh, for example when we need to to speak about like new menu or okay. something more serious, we organize a bar meeting that okay. sometimes it takes half an hour, an hour. It depends on the point that we need to discuss. Got it. Sometimes we just do a bar meeting between us, like uh, the bar manager, our director of mixologist and me. So something maybe more uh, intimate, more connect with the uh, business plan or so project for the future. Can we go deeper futures. into that? Let's say what kind of meetings, what kind of bar meeting subjects do you cover usually with your team? With the team, we, we speak about the service. Okay. Uh, if we need to improve any area like on the service or if we need to change something or if we need to grow up on something like uh, organizing, uh, for example, a uh, group, group for studying or if we need to to improve our knowledge mm -hmm. so we we get focus on a point so everyone explain his problem if they are good or not with something and so we try to find a solution all together mm -hmm. but this is like something that happened less often every day we do a small briefing before the service so we decide who is working in the station one two because we have a very long uh, front bar so in one station we can fit two even two bartenders two bartenders okay. and we need to understand who is staying in the station one is like a chef Got it. because it called like the the ticket and uh, from the station one you give the drinks to the station two so sure. you kind of call the sure. the, the, the meals to the other bartenders yeah, like yeah. a chef yeah, yeah, yeah. and commis like a, there's it. a specific like organization behind the bar mm -hmm. Got it. I think uh, one of the things that would be amazing to know is, let's say you were, you know, your boss tells you that, okay, you know, next quarter, let's grow sales by 10%. You know, what kind of immediate things you would tell your team to do or you would implement in, in a bar? You know, if you just had to grow top line, pure top line. I think the main <clears throat> is uh, everyone's to to push to reach the same goals mm -hmm. or to, as a team. Mm -hmm. So we need to be everyone on the same mentality like uh, we want to to reach this uh, for example the, this top level mm -hmm. sometimes can be 50 best or or tails any companies so we just push we put uh, our goals mm -hmm. all together and we try to do our best in terms of uh, studying uh, approaching to the guests like uh, again it's, n it's nothing that gets our us very like uh, it's not something difficult to do it yeah. because we do it very naturally. Yeah. 
and uh, we just need to to focus a little bit more and maybe push for these goals. Was there goals. any uh, recent example where you had to drive your team for reaching some goal and then you did it and you're proud of it? I think was the the launch of the our new menu. Okay. Up on, once open us time at Browns, where exactly we we build again the menu after uh, the COVID with a new team. So it was very nice to to try the different ingredients, mm -hmm. matching the the new flavors, and uh, collaborate all together. Uh -huh. And of course, sometimes uh, we have some uh, specific research to do, like uh, for each. Uh, person of the team, maybe you, you have a specific uh, person of moment to research. And sometimes, even if you are in charge of the drinks, in the end, everyone's collaborate together. Yeah. So we can never say, I create this, this and that, because it's always a uh, teamwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is beautiful to, to see, like from when you start from zero till when you start to try the new drinks, till we launch the menu that everyone is happy about the flavors mm -hmm. and the drinks. And the people are happy and they come to the bar with uh, happiness like they they are very enthusiastic about the new that's creations a, that's the ultimate way you see right when they smile when they sip yes i guess in their first sip itself you know they're satisfied yeah uh on the bar floor bar supervisor had again you know what are the three to four real challenges that you sometimes you know just come across again and again uh and what are some good tips to solve them you know i think one one of them recently is like recruiting people right yeah so how do you how are you guys finding people and something like that you can just say if there is a dispute between two colleagues how do you resolve it so for sure when we we work our adrenaline is always on the top so the best thing is to to resolve the problem between the the guys of the teams is just to let them come down think about the situation maybe they just argue for nothing mm -hmm. so the best way is to stop reflect things and uh, talk after the service and makes like a one-to-one -one with them mm -hmm. and that's them to understand that it's nothing nothing happened yeah, nothing yeah. very serious and nothing yeah. bad so it's the best way to talk every time because if we keep a bad things inside it will grow 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 and maybe day yeah. by day i don't know it will get even worse and so, what, what about the guest you know sometimes you have a challenging guest uh, any examples, any memories that come across in how you dealt with that person? Me personally, I try always to calm down, like uh, just be relaxed on the table, even if they are not happy about something, like makes them understand that there is a solution. Maybe if they don't like the drinks, we can change it. There is no problem at all. Mm -hmm. But if they start to maybe complain for something that I know is not our fault, mm -hmm. I, I try to make them understand that what what are those examples can, like what are those kind of things which is not your fault let's say uh, one or two i'm I mean, just trying to think as well uh like well, the air conditioning is too much for example something like yeah, that or of course happen okay. for example but it's difficult to manage because some guests maybe they yeah, won't they up. won't happen well, so you try all to find a middle point like between the coldness or the yeah, person yeah. that it feels too too warm or oh, anyway the the room is quite big so we have some point of the room where for example that area is a little bit colder Cold. than uh, that area or when the music is too loud we can uh, change it we have different okay. department as well close to us so like uh, the tea room or charlie's bar in the restaurant so we always have a solution we don't need to see the problem as a problem but just yeah found straight away the answer or the problem or the solution because it's the best way if we stuck about oh this is the problem yeah i mean we're gonna get stuck all day so yeah. we try to find out straight away a solution true and uh, thanks to the team sometimes you have a straight away an help or support even in a harder situation yeah. so this is is the main point like uh support yeah. as well uh from the team and uh when it's too difficult the situation of course there is something that maybe is the house manager mm -hmm. as well that's why it's even easier in the hotel because we have many managers yeah. around that you are never alone even in the artist that's situation true. yeah and even when i'm in charge at the bar i know that i have a support on the security or yeah. night manager and the worst case anyone. Yeah. yes true yes. 
Christina, I want to really dive into uh, actual business problems as well, because that will help other bartenders a lot. You have a couple of slow moving uh, skews, you know, like spirits that are not performing well. Number one, how do you know that this are, what kind of metrics do you use that these are the slow moving products and how fast do you act on it and what do you do to make sure they are done? It depends. We can see from a uh, different diagnostic that sometimes th some spirits are not working very well. So we can use for uh, special drinks of the week. So okay. we try to to push and make the people like try new things. Because sometimes, you know, we have these uh, general brands that are very popular and the people are just focused on that. But one of our main characteristics is also to use like uh, a smaller production spirits so okay. we try to to convince the guests to try something that is unusual or not very commercial got it so it's the best way to again give a different experience yeah so making also the guests try new products mm -hmm. that maybe are gin or just uh coffee liqueurs mm -hmm. with a small brew that you you never hear about it but maybe in terms of quality are much more natural yeah. organic so it depends all the direction that comes from the top yep. every time. So our bar manager and the director of mixologist and me as a supervisor, of course, I try to talk between them and the team. So trying to build, for example, our say special drinks yep. or trying to, to know more about the product and trying to, to convince the guests, try to make some understand that there is something sometimes better or yep. very particular to try. You know, when, uh, a guest comes you know how do you normally uh, approach and what kind of trainings do you give to your people on approaching the guest and asking them for a drink right like how would you normally approach in the best way so our uh, main trainings come from the LQA and Forbes okay. so we need to follow some specific rules some specific uh, timeline like uh, uh, how much time do you have to, to welcome the guests, to Perfect. get them seat? So the moment they're sitting, you have some objective that in, in like 15 seconds, you have to go and approach a guest? Yes, but this is what you learn from this uh, kind of uh, duties, from this kind of uh, companies that, of course, are high standard. You need to follow them. Which standard you said? Forbes Hospitality? Forbes and LQA, yes. Okay. But what makes the difference between one place to another is how to approach the guest, how we approach our guests. For example, we have always a person at the door that welcomes the guests with a big smile. We have a nice waitress that are very mm -hmm. warm. So this makes the difference between one place to another. Even if the standards are the same, mm. we follow all the same standard. Like True. the people that offer a service to the guest is always different. True. It's and they the make different the difference. Background, right? So yeah. that's why I say it's very important to deliver a different uh, service to a guest, Got a it. different experience, yep. for sure, and um, happen every day, honestly. Got it. it. You can see the difference sometimes between a group that is sit there and here. Yep. Some day it's just a couple, they want to spend some time together. Yep. Some are a big group that maybe, like yesterday, they visit Sardinia, so we were talking like about uh, their favorite places, uh -huh. and uh, you create a connection because Sometimes it's so genuine, yeah. like uh, what born in just a few minutes with like a kind of random yeah, people. Yeah, so yeah. you feel just connect and uh, you just start to chat and talk about your, your life or yeah, yeah. yourself. So they say bartender is your best friend, right? Sometimes. <laughs> yes, oh. especially at the bar. <laughs> at the bar, at the, at the third drink, right? Especially. Yes. <laughs> uh, I really want to dive into the concept of, you know, the bar theme and the vibe, right? That, that they say to create the vibe. Uh, what do you think, you know, uh, you look for in your bar, especially that you, you know that it's creating the right vibe and the customers are, ex are getting what they're expecting? So one of our, I would say, uh, main uh, goals every day is to deliver a specific uh, service to each guest. Like okay. uh, for each guest, we need to serve and approach in a different way like uh how, how, can you give me an example of how would you you know approach a customer versus b customer and what do you No, it depends that? like uh everyone is different so every person needs to live and enjoy a different experience at the bar okay. in the best way of course yep. and uh, what we try to do is like to for each customer like try to understand what they like, what they don't like, mm -hmm. how they prefer to approach like some, some guests, they are like uh, 
more like um, on on their own, like they don't want to, on their own, to talk yeah, got a it. lot. So you can see straight away from when they arrive at the bar. I just want to have a drinks and relax. So yeah. you don't you don't really go to ask so many questions. So you just keep smooth the, the situation till when they don't really want to talk I'm or sure. everything. Sometimes some people they prefer to to have an hug on their arrival. Yeah. So and they have a, a chat on uh, private life, so sharing beautiful moments. It, that's why it's like uh, very subjective. It's like each guest has, needs to have a different experience. Got it. it depends on his, his day. What or, they want, right, yeah. I guess. W what is a good menu to you? You know, uh, if you had to reach some business goals from a menu, what would you look for in designing a menu? So we always uh, give a, a different choice. Like uh, in some pages, we have something that is more much more light and refreshing mm -hmm. <clears throat> in order we got some um, for each page we've got four alcoholic okay. and the last one is the non-alcoholic so for each palate and for each preference we got like uh, different drinks do you see non-alcoholic yeah, still yeah. moving yeah for each page like we we Whoa. got four the last one is non-alcoholic and of course it's like something very elaborate we use uh, like a special product uh -huh. to make a uh, very nice drinks. Uh, what are the elements, right? I can see here the lights, uh, the music. What sort of things do you normally can play with uh, for getting the mood right? You know, do you, I'm sure there is a science behind why things are, why the lights are this way, you know? So our uh, <clears throat> main um, characteristic of the bar, our main style is the Art Deco. Okay. Uh, all the picture around are from Terence Donovan. So of course we talk about a photographer from a uh, he has Got his uh, kind of boom on the 60 was his main uh, moment of his career so we even on the music and the light we cannot really far away from this kind of art deco so you style. have to stick with the 60s you have to stick with this so th that's your yeah. theme basically we have this kind of very classic music do, even during the the evening the aperitif time uh -huh. that is very busy but are these kind of songs that they they are so so popular that yep. everyone when they sit down gets already relaxed sometimes you can see people singing so mm -hmm. it's like very very nice and warm the atmosphere especially with the gold lights that mm -hmm. during the day from when we open to the closing they go a little bit down okay. so we start maybe with this uh, bright and shining light gold mm -hmm. light till when it's like quite nice gold and dark mm -hmm. till uh, 11 and the closing time so it's very beautiful to see the, um, the difference between like uh, yeah. the starting and the end of nice. the shift. Nice. And do you normally uh, in your menu planning uh, make like 20-30% of the drinks have to be something which is not available anywhere else? Like do you have some unique uh, drinks that you try to purposefully make so that you, your guests, you know, have a unique factor here? Mm, we all really no. Nice. We always try to make some drinks that are suitable for all the palas, like okay. uh, not just bartender palate, but for each guest, like uh, people that work in the so office. So, which has the most? Uh, like you think that many people can order that? Yes, but just not because we we want to reach like this kind of flavor or this kind of uh, business yeah, plan. Yeah. How you say? Yeah, yeah. But just because we can see, we we understand this. We have so many various guests yep. from all around the area or the world mm -hmm. that they need to uh, to find the, the specific drink, the favorite drink. And if we base, for example, our signature on the bartender or bar manager palate, mm -hmm. sommelier, for example, mm -hmm. it gets too far away from what normal guests they normal will love it. Right. Yes, True. that's why it's the best to keep always a simple flavor, very uh, minimal garnish. Like this is our. Style How many cocktails do you guys have in your menu? So we have uh, five for each page and our four pages okay. are all based on uh, different like uh, uh, people or moment that they happen during the the time before okay. from when the hotels open. So lunch cocktails, dinner cocktails, something yes. like that. Uh, closing remarks for other bar supervisors, you know, on, on how they can improve uh, their day to day role. Like, you know, how you personally learn, how you improve. You know, uh, any tips for them? I always say that I start like uh, with this job, like uh, because I was in love already with this kind of environment. And I always felt that 
even if I was sacrificing my, my time mm -hmm. and my Saturday night out, like I knew that something was coming, something yeah. good. And I always trust myself and I believe in what I was doing. So if anyone like doesn't live in London or in a smaller city and they don't feel like comfortable with what they do, yeah. in terms of even of creativity, think you don't need to think a lot, but just take a trolley and, yeah. uh, and make come. a plan to to grow up. And even all the people that are in a good seat or in a good bar, just to believe in themselves and uh, in what they they want to do for the future. So nice. It's not it's not a big deal if yeah. you if you trust yourself and if you think you are doing the the right uh, thing. Yeah. Think you are in the right way to to finally reach your goals.